All right, guys, here we are. Anthony Gagliardi. Man, appreciate you doing this. We're here at yeah, Tackle man. Attic. Shout out to them guys, man. Awesome tackle store here at Raver Country. Come check them out. But, man, you had a pretty good day yesterday. It was, it was a good start. I had a good morning. I definitely had a good morning, and it got tough on me. I went up into the day, and, you know, I'm hoping that, hope when I go out there tomorrow that, you know, that we can kind of replicate that and, and catch some early. Um, but pro I, I'm catching them off of basically one spot. I have two spots and sharing them. Uh, sharing both of them, and it's it's a deeper it's a deeper place, and so any probably any day it's gonna it, that's gonna kind of fizzle out, and those fish are gonna move, and it's a lot of small fish. I caught a ton of fish yesterday, but really? that's another thing that's a little worrisome is catching so many and, and only catching maybe four or five scoreables out of that you know 25 or 30 fish that I caught. It just I don't know I don't know how good I feel about that, but I think that. You know, the fish are definitely probably ready to make a move. You know, we're getting some warmer weather today. It's supposed to be even warmer tonight. Um, and I, I saw some fish up yesterday when I when I went in shallow toward the end of the day. So yeah, if I have to catch them like that, I, you know, I probably, maybe I can't catch as much as I did yesterday, but maybe I can kind of squeak in. It just depends on how good the bite is. Gotcha. Did this lake uh, kind of fish how you expected it to in practice? Uh, you know, I, I thought, you know, when, when I saw the schedule, I thought it was going to be farther along. Um, yeah, I just think that the cold weather that we've had, obviously the you know the the real big freeze you guys had here, yep. um, it probably set it back a little bit. And then we just had some, you know, right when we got here, it was just some cold nights. We had some cool nights and windy days, and and some like today it's cloudy, so the water temperature is just kind of it's not really moved up like I think that it probably could have. Um, but it's the fish are ready though. I mean they, you know, they're they're ready to make that move, and I, and a lot of them here spawned. I'm sure I know they have. Uh, but there's still definitely, I think, a big wave getting ready to push up. And um, I was just kind of hoping it was going to be like that when we got here. But right. It was just a little bit tougher than I thought. You know, as you mentioned, you know, the spawning trend kind of heating up. Do you think that's going to play a major factor as this tournament goes on? It very well could. Um, you know, I, I would venture to say that it probably will. And, you know, I, there'll be a lot of different things going on. And I think that's the case pretty much every time you see this group of guys get together is they find way, different ways to catch them. Um, but there's a lot of guys here that are going to look for spawners, and if there's if there's any out there, they're going to find some of them. And, and for sure, I mean, it's definitely a way that you might catch you know, catch you one or two big ones in, during the course of the day, um, which could make the difference. So you might not catch all your fish doing, doing that, but if you just catch one or two really good ones, then it's definitely a key part of your game plan. Gotcha. So let's talk about your uh – experience so far with the MLF Bass Pro Tour. How, how has this kind of worked out for you and your you know, group? I like it. You know, I've, I've really enjoyed it. It's tough. It's hard. It's harder. Um, it's harder physically. It's harder mentally and emotionally. Um, just knowing, you know, just knowing when guys are catching fish is a different dynamic than, than most tournament fishermen are accustomed to. And, and so when you hear that score tracker, and, and if you happen to be having one of those days where you're not getting bites, right. it's frustrating. Um, but at the same time, it's you're getting a lot of useful information. Um, you know, you can see who's around you. You're able to know um, what they're catching. You know, not necessarily how they're catching, unless you're close enough to see. But you can definitely gather a lot of information that they can help you. It can change the course of your day. Um, it, it can clue you in as to, man, I'm doing the completely wrong thing. I need to change it up. Right. And so, if you can make those adjustments, and that's what it becomes. This this format. It truly becomes a, a game of adjustments, and you have to make adjustments throughout the event, especially because it just it spreads out over so long. You know, it's just even this first round, we have a day off in between, so yep. so much can change uh, between the start and and that championship round that you know something completely different may be happening. And, and in order to win and do well, you have to be catching a lot of fish. You have to be doing what's current. Like you just can't. You really can't be fishing a dying pattern in this thing if if you're going to do well. So you have to really make those adjustments. Right, and they shortened uh, the practice days too, didn't they? I don't think so. Um, we we always have a shorter second day, uh, just to get everybody off the water, knowing that the guys are fishing that next day. You know, you don't, we don't want to have to be out there feeling right. like we have to practice until dark. Exactly. Um, so they, they they shorten that second day just to make sure everybody gets off the water. Um, but it's still hard if you're fishing in the first group like I did. I, I quit a little bit early. I just feel like I always have so much to do to get my boat prepared, get my rods and everything rigged up like I want to. So I stopped. I fished a couple of hours short of, of what we could have just so I could get back and, and take care of my 
mess that I had created in my boat in the practice day. Right. And you know, so normal events, you know, you, is normally four days, you know. Mm -hmm. Like you said, MLF spans out. Right. Does that kind of change the way you approach an event because it's so long? Do you have to like, you know, set up a specific game plan? How do you prepare for that for the event being so long? You know, I don't think that I really do anything in way of preparation for that. It's just knowing, um, just knowing that what you find in practice may not last you the entire time, and so you just have to you just have to know that going in and be willing to, you know, to scrap a game plan that maybe was working early. You just have to be ready to change up and, and do something different if you feel like you need to. And that's where the guys that do well, these guys have good instincts of, as to when to, you know, to give up on a, on a certain technique or pattern and move on. Those are the guys that, that do well in this. The ones that can really fish by their instincts and, and fish by the seat of their pants, that's, that's the ones that tend to, you know, more, more times than not, they make it through that first round and, and especially on to the championship round. Yeah. All right, guys. So Anthony runs a Falcon boat. You know they're uh, they're one of the newer brands yep. on the market. Uh, I think Brian Latimer one of ones also. Yeah, there's um, I think we got four now. Brandon Coulter runs one here on this tour. I run one. Um, Matt Lee yep. is running one this year. Um, yes, yeah, so there's they're definitely it's a great boat. You know they built them right in my backyard, and you know, that was one of the reasons that. Uh, when I was with Ranger, you know, I was with Ranger, had been with them for a long time and wasn't looking to make a move. Like, I, I wasn't interested in changing boat companies, and I knew that those guys were there. Uh, they were only a couple years old, um, but I just, I was content with what I had. And um, I finally got in the boat with a friend of mine that had one, and just immediately, just, it, it shocked me. It did. I mean, just the ride of the boat really surprised me, and enough to the point where I told myself, you know, I, need, I at least need to go down and and talk to these guys and, and just you know hear them out and uh, meet them and, and that's what I did and just man we just we hit it off so well they're just such good people just had so much in common that it, it didn't take me long to realize that it was going to be a good decision for me to to make that move and, and I did and there's not a day has gone by when I you know I know that that was the best decision that I've ever made in my career was making that switch and, and the boats that they're, that they're building now are just truly fantastic it's such a great rough water boat it's a great riding boat and, and if you talk to, and, and Matt told me on the phone, he called me up, we were talking about it. He asked a lot of these officials, you know, he talked to these officials, because they ride in just about everything right. that's out there. And there was such good positive feedback from them that that's one of the reasons that he, that he decided to go talk to them about, about switching. So it definitely has a great reputation as far as the ride goes. It's a fast boat, um, it's super stable, and it fishes well. And that's one of the things that, you know, the tournament guys, you know, they, they they want that and they want a boat that's stable. So if you get somebody in the back and they're walking side to side right. and it's just a stable platform, um, it tracks really straight. It just, it fishes really, really good. And the layout's like the biggest deck on, on the market, 99 inch beam. So I love the, the, the width that you have up there on the front deck and especially as many rods as I tend to have right. out all the time with all the different stuff I like to do. But it's just a great boat. It's a great boat for good people and I'm super happy to be with them. Good deal. Alrighty guys, so everybody knows Anthony Force World Cup mm -hmm. champion. Right. Man, I mean that to hold that title is amazing. Talk about that a little bit. It was it was definitely, you know, the highlight of, of my career and just you know, the fact that not only winning one, but to win it, you know, on my home lake, you know, in front of a home crowd, we had a packed house and that's what in the end, that's what made it so special was just the fact that I was able to do it there with so much support. Um and then just not only that, but even how the year played out with the way I, I missed the first tournament. I was I got DQ from that first tournament from a crazy um, inadvertent violation that we had just implemented that year by practicing with people. I, I actually went down and, and fished a Costa event uh, several weeks before that, and, and a co-angler that was fishing that event traveled with me, and he practiced with me. And just we were come to find out, I was a couple of days after the deadline, Ooh. after a cutoff where I wasn't supposed to be with somebody that wasn't in our tournament. Um, so I. Once I realized that, I turned myself in, and of course they they DQ'd me from that first event. So it started the year off as you couldn't have started it off any worse than that. You know, I knew the cup was coming to my home lake, and here I am to begin the year, and I got DQ'd and zero points in right. the first tournament. So I'm um, just you know I put my head down and um, you know, just kind of fought back and had a good tournament in the next one, top ten. Uh, I just slowly started working my way back up into points, and there at the end I, I made it by just a little bit, but I qualified in probably the next to the last spot. 
and just it was one of those deals where it's meant to be. You know, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, and it was definitely meant to be for that one. But so that definitely something I remember for the rest of my life, and super proud to have accomplished that. Awesome.